Are you stuck at home in lockdown? Yeah, I know, we all are. Don't worry, we've got you covered because it's time once again for Live at Night with Pete Ferrero. Where whatever happens, happens. Now along with his special guests, here is your host, Pete Ferrero. You with the life with a party. You- <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing? Let's let's talk to this group before the other group gets in. How are you guys all doing? Uh, Much better right now. Sandra. Much What's better happening? right now at the moment. What's happening in your world in Florida? Sandra's in Florida. We learned that last time. I'm on day 1,000 in Florida. Uh, I feel like I signed, you know, Gilligan's Island, I signed up for the three-hour tour, and it's like 300 days later. No, right. I'm no seriously, I think I'm on day 53 or something like that. It's, I mean, no complaints. It's like 80 degrees outside. I'm sitting outside right now um, eating a ton. Uh, my parents are cooking like crazy daily. So eating, drinking, working out, hanging out with my son, all is good here in Naples, in Napoli, Florida. There so not go. much has changed since the last time I've seen you. And by the way, thank you for having me back. Yeah, I'm happy to always have everyone back. Uh, and then Angela, how are, how, is, how is everything down, uh, down in New Jersey? You, you, you and Mike live near each other, I feel. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in West Orange. Where are you, Mike? Notley. Oh, okay, maybe not that. Notley? Yeah. Neighbors. Practically neighbors. Yeah. Um, no, not much has changed. Again, thank you so much for having me back. Um, well, we were all going to hang out last time, remember? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> had a ball. Um, so yeah, this is uh, you know, just the same. Cooking a lot, and you know, yeah, cooking a lot. <laughs> and you know, when the weather's nice, just kind of laps around the house. <laughs> okay. yeah. That's about as, the yard. <laughs> as far as we can go these days. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, the classic chef, Mike Carino, is back. I feel like it's like Hollywood Squares. <laughs> <laughs> Our center square. I like that. That's me. <laughs> You're the center square. Yeah. Uh, how's everything going with you at the, the, the shop and all of that? Busy. We're very busy. We're, uh, we've got a huge donation schedule this week on top of regular business we got um let's see salvation army umdnj say county jail east orange ems nutley police bloomfield fire and police that's this week nice wow. man and tim hillman came dressed for the occasion pants <laughs> <laughs> night <laughs> I haven't put a suit on and I don't even know how long since this thing's been going on. Nice to see you got dressed up. Much appreciated. It's nice to put on something nice, you know? And then we have Joseph D'Onofrio on the bottom there. How are you, man? Everybody's excited to see you. Good. I'm excited to see everybody else. Nice to see you. Yeah, man. Um, star of A Bronx Tale and that's my favorite movie. And Goodfellas, right? You were in Goodfellas. I was only a co-star. I wasn't a star. Uh, well, I don't know. I think, I, I, I think in a Bronx tale, you made some of that movie shine. So I disagree with you, but I understand what you mean. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, man? What's cooking? Not much. <laughs> How's the whole group? The Italians are taking over Facebook, right? Well, I guess so. I mean, you know. <laughs> uh, so, hey, Joe, real quick. What is, what's been up with you, man, since this whole thing happened? Did you have a lot of gigs and comedy stuff and work and all that stuff? And it all got kind of shot to shit? Yeah, I had uh, I had this gig down in Texas I was supposed to do. It got pushed back. I had this gig I was supposed to be shooting right now in upstate New York, a pilot called Almost Made, and that got pushed back also. And the comedy show was April 25th, so that was supposed to be Saturday. So that, we just did that online. So, you know, but I'm doing it July 25th. If you need tickets, go to josephdonofriocomedy.com if you want to see that. it. Yeah. show online, and it's on Zoom. This is it. Everybody's doing Zoom these days. Everything's being done Zoom. So I have a question for that because I had Vic on a couple of weeks ago. Um, he hasn't delved into the online Zoom comedy. What is that like for you? Is it you're still getting the same laughs like you were? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, Pete. You know, I don't know what's going on with this online stuff. You know? I don't know if I could take it. I don't know what's going on. I don't good. know if I gotta like go to Zoom and like choke this guy to death. <laughs> I'm gonna do. 
I can't stay in my house no more. I gotta think about the school. He's doing the Vic, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah trying to do Vic, but I wasn't as well, good as he does as him. Right, he does Vic does a pretty good Vic. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like the one he did about the coronavirus. Oh, that was incredible. Sitting in his car, man. He was like flipping out. And, like, fire. Yeah. It was great. I wanted to do one, but I was like, I let him leave it to him. Yeah. And then we have Tony Manja here. Yeah, hey, know, yeah. you'd be like the Jim J. Bullock of the of the Hollywood Squares here. That's an old <laughs> reference. Um, how are you, man? How's everything going in your world? Very good. Very busy. Busy, busy, busy. Okay. So what do you? What that? Well, I work. I, I work on the outside, so I get to see. I get to see the outside world. I don't have to see the four walls of my house. Yeah. Um, eating a lot, cooking a lot, doing a lot of podcasts. Oh, I, I, Work on the outside, so is that you? Is that you? Who's who's replaying us here? <laughs> okay, uh, first time caller, long time. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike, let me ask you. Uh, in terms of the restaurant, we do this every time that you're on. In terms of restaurants, <laughs> what's what's happening? Uh, I think we're starting to see a slow, uh, like soft opening of, of of a few different restaurants. I know a couple of my friends are going to be doing um, some like three day a week. Um, grab and go stuff. Um, I saw Ariane is Ariane. Don't Ariane is one of them. She's going to yeah. be on Thursday. Yeah. She's going to be cooking in the kitchen on Thursday. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's doing three days a week. I think Ryan over at Foschino is doing three days a week. And I think a couple of my other, my other friends are, are, uh, are starting to open up too. So I, I think there's a little bit of a, of a, of a shift happening. Um, I, I, I'm still hearing a lot of horror stories about the lack of financing, SBA, PPP, Government funding and shit it's like fucked that. Up. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Joe, I mean, uh, it's it's not great, but it's it's not bad that things are starting to kind of make a, a little bit of a turn. So, yeah. But Joe, you you have something? Are you are you in that thing that's on uh, Amazon right now? That Gravesend? Yes, I'm in uh, episode three and four. I play uh, Johnny Mad Dog Mangano. Uh, we got a great <laughs> viewing. And um, I think they're getting ready to make episode five when this is done because the director and writer called me up and said, I'm in a couple more, so be ready. And I'm like, let's do it. Hopefully, hopefully let's do it soon. Yeah, I don't know. Did you see it? I haven't seen it yet, but I talked to, I share uh, someone who's representing something also represented uh, that. And we had a chat about it this morning. He says it's, do it's doing incredible. You know, it's trending on Amazon right now. Have you guys gotten to see this Gravesend yet on Amazon? No, I'm, we'll definitely check yeah. it out. Oh my God! Oh, no. what's the other thing with the fucking thing what here? What kind of Italians are you? You don't even support your own paisan over here. What's going on? I'm not gonna come down and put you in the trunk or something. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be binging on, it man. tonight. You know, I'm I'll good at drinking blood and chopping up bodies, so uh. be careful out there. Hey, you need any of your veal chops in your restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> I can make you some. Oh man, it's good. I'm only joking. No, no, Tim. So if you, uh, watch it, you watch it. If not, oh, we're, I'm going to watch it tonight. Watch it. Now, now, Tim, watch it tonight. Let me watch. ask you this, uh, and we got the whole group here, so you can make this announcement officially. You have officially moved your wedding. Tim is supposed to get married on May 16th. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, that's not happening. Uh, but <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, what what is what is the update in the wedding world for you right now? It has been officially moved to May 8th of next year. I've uh, messaged everyone and it's bing, bing, boom, we're done. Nice. That, this may be the last update as far as that for, for Live at Night. Yeah, well, there's nothing more to say. Nothing more to say. It, it's officially been, it's in the can. Okay, so are we all invited? <laughs> now, 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 yeah. Now that the official, you've, won, you've won Hollywood Squares, you're on this episode and now you're invited. <laughs> Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, it's on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, what is going on with your background? I mean, I love it. You're not in a cellar right now, right? You're, you were in like Napa five minutes ago. Now you're in a cellar. What? Now we're in the cellar. Now we're getting. Yeah, we're getting, I, I heard that we're doing a wine episode here, so I, I figured we gotta have a nice. You know, we gotta have the atmosphere. I like it. I love it. I love it. What are so, you drinking? Well, I think Sandra is gonna open up that conversation. What is everybody drinking? Yeah, I'm drinking a Pinot Noir uh, from Oregon. Okay. Very nice. nice. I know what I know what Joe is drinking. Nothing. Yeah, what am I drinking? A <laughs> Corona? A Corona? No, no. No. Oh. <laughs> no, no. A virgin pina colada. There you uh, go. Can't yeah. you see him on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> I have to learn how to do all that. I am so not tech savvy. It's just a virtual background. 
I oh, just I'm put mine on today, huh? Let's I see. have this like thing that my father father put there, like a sun, like this freaky sunflower. That's all I got. Yeah. Uh, uh, yesterday, Tim and I were playing <laughs> with these. <laughs> Ansel, what are you drinking? I am drinking uh, a beautiful Nebbiolo, uh, courtesy of our friend Eva of Bonami Wines. Ah, uh, Eva. Uh, yeah. She was on last time. Yes, did I make that up? Yeah. Invite her in. Fuck it. <laughs> Come on right in. I will. I will. As soon as I'm. Uh, so this is uh, a Roero. And so um, it's. Uh, I can. I can say this producer. So Nino Costa is the name of the producer. Um, Stefanino, Costa Stefanino uh, is the father. Uh, the current winemaker is Alessandro, I believe. Uh, they've been organic for 150 years. Oh, some, wow. Yeah, some of the vines in this wine are 100 years old. And um, it's really, really lovely. It's a puppy. It's a 2015, and it's a Nebbiolo, so it's a baby, baby, baby. Nice. So, soft shoes, you know. Um, but I had it earlier tonight. Guys, I know everybody can relate to this. I was cleaning out my freezer, and I found a marinara in the freezer that my mother made me. Wow. Years ago. And it was delicious. It was nice. You now your mother's sauce, you know? Nothing better, right? Right. With a big, I put a big, you know, scoop of ricotta on that. Yeah. Was, oh, God. Oh. Uh, Tony oh. Manja, what have you been making? What are you drinking? Are you drinking anything? This is, this is it. This no, is Tony Manja, I'm asked. Tony Manja. Oh, I, the whole screen was frozen, so I... I'm drinking water. Oh, okay. That's okay. Oh, Poland pull, pull Spring. It's, uh, it's what it means to be from Maine. What it means to be from Maine. But it's not. It's okay. That's that's legal. There's nothing wrong. With I, do I have to have to like put my pinky up when I drink the water? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yes. Now it's now it's official. Uh, but but when Mike, what have you? What are you drinking? I have uh, Caduceus Cellars Onesta. This is a Merlot Barbera 50-50 blend from uh, Arizona. Nice. My buddy is a winemaker out there. And uh, later, when I'm watching Gravesend, I'm going to be drinking the Mars up. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so I'll be binging that later with this bottle. Yeah. Well, I mean, I... Been, I tried to get him on, but he, was, he had something going on. Anything that's old. So I've already watched Bronx Tale the first day of... I'm like, I was like, fuck it. I'm in, a, I'm in quarantine. Bronx Tale. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's my go-to, you know? Uh, real quick, man, and I know we did a whole podcast, and you can find that in the archives about Bronx Tale, but I'm going to let, if anyone here has a question about Bronx Tale, shoot it to Joe right now. He's going to answer it. But uh, mine is just the overall experience of making that movie. What, what now do you look back on with that movie all, the, all these years later? See that? That's up for you right there. I love that. I love that. One of my favorite scenes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Just looking back on it now, all these years later, it's this fucking epic movie amongst, uh, you know, all of us Italians and just in general. What is your, what do you think about it now, looking back on it all, the, all these years later? Wow, I think it's a great picture and I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to be in it. And there's so many memories involved with it and so much things that came out of it. And it's just great that it's still going, and I'm just grateful that it turned out to be such a great experience and a great hit, and it's still going, and I'm still getting to be on shows because of it, and I'm still getting to work because of it, and I'm still getting, you know, friends with people because of it. And it's great to just be, you know, loved and liked, you know, because of your work. It's nice. It is awesome. Yeah. And Terrell is so great in that movie. Have you had an opportunity to reunite with her uh, since then? Have you done yes. like a Comic-Con or anything like that? Yes, we did actually too. Uh, we did a Comic-Con in, uh, in um, Jersey, a Chilla theater like two years ago. And then we did actually a show. They had a couple of guys from the Bronx Tale and we all went to Chicago. And this guy had us in a feast. And we were at the feast and he asked us questions in front of everybody at the feast. And it was great, man. It was great. And she's really amazing. And she talked about how she got the part and how many times she auditioned and all that other stuff. And it's just amazing to see, you know, where she was and where she came. She's a great, wonderful lady as, and as of now. 
Yes, and she's grown into, you know, a, she's a tremendous talent. You know, I'm, I'm, she was going to be in the movie Mob Con up in Jersey, oh, but um, she, mm-hmm. they, they canceled it. I wasn't yeah. doing it because I had something else prior going on at that time, but she was going to do it. And I'm sure we're going to do more. She's great, man. Eventually. Reach out to, her, reach out to her on Instagram or Facebook. She'll message you back. She'll come on your show. No yeah. doubt. Oh, I, I wish. Yeah, I love her. I just she's tell her, say, Joseph D'Onofrio. Told yeah. me that actually be on my show. Would you be on my show? Okay, and I, bet I will. I will hit her up. There we go. She's the guy tonight. We we got uh we've got Chaz there in the in Tony Mondra's background. Tony, do you have a question for Joe about any of the movies that he's been in while he's here? No, I mean the the Bronx Tale is a classic. I mean, really, it's it's one of it's one of the the movies that you you can say you could watch it. You could watch it every day. And you wouldn't get bored. You'll you'll you're always gonna pick something up else something in it that you didn't realize the first time you watched it. Uh, I think one of my favorite scenes, of course, has to be. The scene in uh, in the Shea Bippy when when uh, when uh, what's the famous line? Now you can't leave. Yeah. Oh, all right. That's that that's that that's a classic scene. Oh, I thought it was one of my. I thought it was one of my scenes. I was hoping I that he went there. I, 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 I think I want to shoot somebody right that's, now. That's my <laughs> line, yeah. I'm gonna have to shoot somebody right now. <laughs> I think we got him here. He's here. Yeah. I put um, something up there for you too, so you can. If you want to ask me a question about good, that's good fellas. Yeah, yeah, right that's a good one too, yeah, man. Obviously, me out. And, and I'm wearing, I'm wearing a shirt. I'm wearing a shirt from Goodfellas. Oh, there we go. Everybody's <laughs> celebrating Joe Night. Yeah. No, we got the birthday cake coming out soon with uh, Vinny Pastore, Val Kilmer, Lorraine Brago, uh, Ian McGregor. It's gonna be great. I just heard we did a bunch of scenes. Yeah. And we, I only had like three lines in this movie. But we improv the hell out of it. Nice. And the director called me the other day, and he's like, Joe, we left, like, almost everything you impro- improv in. So I'm like, wow, it's great, you know? And That's it's a great. Comedy. You know how we do with the improv, Pete? Oh, yes. And I, I love that about you. I love that you can, you can take some text and just sort of, you know, run with it and make it your own and, like, build on it even, even more. Where you're like, I want to do that web series you wrote, man. That it's going to be fun. We're, we're going to once the world That was back. so great, the writing <laughs> Thank it was you. excellent. It was so easy for me to do, and I was just like looking to do it, and then I was like, <sighs> "Well, I mean, listen, every I got into doing more things, and then this thing happened. So, but that's definitely on the top priority list of things I want to do when when the world opens up. It's easy enough too. What do you right, think? My- How are we going to open up anyway? How are we going to like do a <laughs> film? Are we going to have to have like no kissing scenes and no like like uh, grabbing anybody to the neck or anything? You know? <laughs> grab Six feet apart. I do, I do think for all the industries here, and we've kind of done this in the roundtables before, but how is the world going to look in all of your interests, uh, industries moving forward? Sandra, let's go with you. How is, the, how is it going to look in your world soon? It might look like this. <laughs> so I do, you know, as I think you guys know, I do wine events. I get hired to entertain and schmooze and talk about wine and share my passion about wine um, to people. So I honestly don't know who's going to really want to come out anytime soon to you know, any kind of large gathering. So I think I'm going to be doing more of more, more and more of this. Um, that being said, I know I have a few little private events and tastings uh, uh, in, you know, planned for August, September, small groups. So I'm hoping that's that, yeah. yeah, I'm hoping that moves forward. By the way, I don't want to forget to tell you what I'm drinking. Can I tell oh, you? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, drinking? Sandra. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Ew. I love this wine so much. I need to, sh- I talked about it the last time. So it's proper Pinot Grigio. So, you know, Pinot Grigio, I don't want to get into it. You know how I feel, uh, Pete and Angela, you guys know how I feel about like Santa Margarita and all that. I'm sorry if anyone out there likes Santa Margarita. I'm Fuck sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I hate Santa Margarita. I hate Santa Margarita too. Santa Margarita. Pinot. I hate it. Yeah. Hate it. Joe, you hate it, right? You're with me. You're with me. It tastes I like, like Jamine. Jamine's better. Jamon. <laughs> exactly. Santa Margarita just tastes like water. It's, I mean, but you know, again, I'm sorry if you like it. Don't, don't, don't hate me. Fuck them. This yeah. is perfect. so. Venica. Welcome to the bathroom. <laughs> this is uh, Venica. Venica. It's proper Pinot Grigio from Friuli Venezia Giulia, so northeastern Italy. 
Um, it's, it's Pinot Grigio made with some skin contact. I want you guys to check out this color. Wow. See that like color. super sexy copper color? That's from spending a few hours. You know, most of the time white wine gets separated from the skins. They uh, uh, rack it, you know, filter it, find it. What is going on? We everybody's, got the twice. <laughs> everybody's messing around with their backgrounds and so, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. This is what this <laughs> can look like with some skin contact. It's so aromatic. I love this wine so much. It's coming from an amazing region of Italy called Colio. Um, it's like stone fruit and this little mm. creamy texture and um, uh, um, nectarine and a little bit of like white flour. I can't recommend it enough. So. That's I'm going to also recommend this. You have to follow Sandra on Instagram because every once in a while she pops up a video of her playing piano and it is absolutely phenomenal. She's super talented. I yeah. miss my piano. I haven't been, you know, my piano's home in Jersey. Yeah. Uh, but what do you think of Jaman Pinot Grigio? I think it's very good. It's very, and, they're, and what's the other one they do? Um, they make a few, but what's, we used to sell a ton of it at the wine library. Santa Margarita is overrated, man. Everybody likes that. Just because, oh, I'm drinking Santa Margarita. It's shit. It's shit wine. It's mass produced. It tastes like nothing. Again, if you drink it, it's all good. It's all You're just good. Gonna, if you, if uh, you really like this, uh, this wine, just at uh, Sandra Zahri. Hang on. We got a surprise for Joe. Let's see. I think we gotta... I'd rather have a Gavi to Gavi, black lady. Oh. <laughs> I like Gavi. Gavi, I mean... Gavi to Gavi to Gavi. Gavi, Gavi from the commune of Gavi. Pilo. There you go. Yeah. Paul oh, <laughs> Borghese is on, is on the line here. Paul Borghese? What's he want, Paul Borghese? He's doing the almost <laughs> lead with me, as a matter of fact, Paul Borghese. Are you here, Paul? I can't... I... I... I can't oh, see. Am I on here? I can't see. No, you're not on. You have to hit start video. Oh, come on. Really? There's not a button here that says that. I see you. It's on the left, left bottom corner, Paul. Left bottom corner. Oh, uh, okay. And I'm a director, Joey, right? And I don't even know. <laughs> well, it's Zoom. Yeah, there, he is. there he is. Hey, there he goes. <laughs> so, Joe, I had Paul. I wanted Paul to stop in because I was talking right, to Paul. Hey, hey. What's what's that? You, you, you went in and out there, bud. He's banging around. Sounds like Darth Vader a little bit. Paul directed me, and back in the day, I actually what, was asked the question which director I like to work with, and he was on my list. That's very nice. Uh, but what Paul, oh, I was on your list. I used to be on the top of his list. I used to be at the top of his. Now I'm on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put anybody on the top of the list because then I I alienate everybody. You know, everybody's on the top of the list. Got a boy, on, Paul. Here, so, tell him why I'm here. Yeah, tell so, Joey why I'm here. so one of the things we wanted to do, Joe, for you was I wanted someone to pop in, say hi, and say all the most amazing things about you, what they love about working with you when they get on a set and, and work with you. So Paul was like, I'm absolutely doing this 100%. You must have paid him a lot of money. No, no. He was like, <laughs> I'm going to take away family time, and I'm going to do this. Oh, what, you. what you got, Paul? Yeah, well, yeah, Peter reached out to me today, and, you know, we, we all worked together before, and uh, he's like, oh, I got Joey, Joey did all for you on today, he's going to be my guest, he goes, can you come on and talk about Joey and your experience working with him, and you know Joey, uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite. <laughs> Joey makes my job easy, you know, everything we've worked on together, uh, when I'm directing him, it's, he, just, he just makes every frame come to life. And, uh, you know, I don't know how much more I can say about it. We just finished something called Dupe recently. We worked on Back in the Day together, so many of your project together. And, uh, Almost me. Joey's a lot of fun to work with. Yeah. He's a real pro and he's a lot of fun to work with. Yeah. And I owe him $20. Almost I owe him $20, me, $20 Joey. <laughs> and a Almost good guy, me. too, right? And, and just overall, a good guy to have around. Oh, well, that part, yeah, that part's easy. I mean, as a friend, Joey's a great friend and, and, you know, he's always a lot of fun and he's a loyal guy and, you know, he's got all those good qualities about him. And he's a handsome guy too, you know? <laughs> he's Thank a handsome you, Paul. devil. Paul, what is your favorite movie uh, that Joe was in? Maybe prior to Back in the Day and stuff, what do you like his performances in? Did you love him in, I, we were just talking about A Bronx Tale. Do you love him in A Bronx Tale? 
I love, I mean, I love him in everything. Of course, yeah, yeah, yes to that. I mean, it's amazing that he was that good, that young. But, right. you know, I think Joey shines, I think, in, in everything that he does. I, you know, I don't know if I could single something out because I feel like, like I said before, Joey brings something to every frame that he's in. You know, he brings life to every frame that he's in. Yeah. Yeah, try not to miss a frame, man. You can't. <laughs> Right. Yeah, Joey likes his camera time. Got to constantly yeah, keep moving, man. That's why anytime I say a line, I want to make it memorable. See how I just said memorable? I didn't yeah, say I remember, memorable. remember you're gonna say it that way. No, I didn't say memorable. I said memorable. <laughs> See the difference? Big difference. Yeah, it's like Santa That's Margarita good acting, Joe. and Jermaine. Santa Margarita, Jermaine. Oh. <laughs> Tell him. Come Who on. else is here? Come on. Wait, who else is here? I, I thought it was, I didn't know how many people, I just saw a beautiful blonde come on. Who else is on here? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Sandra Zadi, who is a wine uh, connoisseur maker, right? Yeah. We've got, like we've got Chef Mike Carino, and we've got Angela also uh, in, in, uh, in, in wines as well, and Tim Hillman here. Uh, in weddings and Tony Manja. Do you know Tony Manja, Paul? From of course I know Tony Manja. Hey, hey Tony. Paul, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> All right. Paul, you got anything nice to say about Paul? Uh, you see, uh, they, I don't know about you. Uh, what? I don't know about you guys, but I only see like one person at a time. So I didn't like. I only saw Joey and Peter so far. I didn't know there were other people. Yeah, there's a bunch of people. You have there's a button that says like gallery view versus. There's a button. There's a button. Body. Uh, but but to, to say something about nice about oh. Paul, Paul is, uh, you know, he's an amazing person. He gets all the way involved and he's always there to help. And uh, that's what I, you know, he's just, he's such a hard worker. He's a good person. And he's, uh, he's just, you know, just amazing person to have on your team. He's, he's a big part of the team and building your team. And he knows how to surround good people around you, obviously. So yeah, but he doesn't miss anything. That's what's good. Yeah. When he's directing, he, he always got your back. He's always yeah. make sure, you know, he makes sure that you don't miss uh, emotion. Anything, yeah. Because acting is about emotions. Yeah. And if I have the wrong emotion when I'm doing a scene, it's going to mess up the scene. Yeah. And the director has to know what emotion I'm saying. That's it. Tony, Tony Manja, you, you said you have some questions from the room. Tony Manja has some questions from Facebook. Yeah, there, there was. A, I think it's more comments than it is questions. So okay. uh, let's see. <clears throat> Somebody said that they're drinking a cab. Her name is Sarah Murphy. I'm gonna uh, sip Newski. Boy, I got you. Up. Hi, Sarah. What's up, girl? Sarah? Here's a new woman. How do you even do that? <laughs> um, somebody. Like oh, that. Sarah also says she loves that the, that the songs that um that that you play, Sandra. Thank she, you, Sarah. Uh, I, I said you that. Know where that bitch is from? And somebody, somebody else asked, "Is this about food and wine?" Is this what? About food and wine. This conversation. But, yeah, well, no, it's about food, <laughs> wine, and film. Yeah, okay. So tell that person to shove off. <laughs> There's not many options of what to watch right now, so find something else if you're not happy. I'll, uh, go, get, I'll go get a chunk of Parmigiano Reggiano and start slicing it up, bro. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Right? So, Paul, real quick, before you, before you leave us, Paul, what have you been eating and drinking at home? Uh, are you doing a lot of cooking? What are you, what's going Ooh. on? I've been, I've been, like, eating way too much. I mean, I can tell you that. I've been binge-watching, you know, I watched Ozark on Netflix. I binge-watched that. I just binge-watched uh, Waco and, of course, Gravesend that uh, Joey shines in. I do a small part in and William DeMeo created and – produced and directed and did it all and played the lead. So I've been watching a lot of television. I don't usually watch a lot of television. So I've been snacking a lot, which is, but I drink as far as drinking goes. Um, I don't know. I sit down at night and uh, I have like a little Fernet. I don't know Ooh. if anybody still drinks Fernet Ooh. Bianco. It's uh, a little old school kind of school action. have that. Yeah. yeah. You know, but a little bit of, not really. That's Bronca, right? Hmm? What is it? Fernet Bronca? Yeah, yeah. It's actually got a good kick to it. What are you talking about? Come on, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> how, how about Joey? That's cool. Those effects you got on it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's a picture from the birthday cake. Everybody out. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. No, this is Joey. Well, I wanted to do a little visit. I'm, I'm in. I'm actually outside. I don't know if you guys can tell I'm outside. 
I, I wanted to make a little festive for you. I even have the uh, Christmas lights on. <laughs> Paul, you're the best, Paul. I can't wait to almost made. We're going to get to act together again. I don't know, have me and you ever acted together? I don't think we ever acted in, like, besides, uh, no, we acted in um, Pete's a Day. Peter's right? Project. Yeah, Peter's and the Uncle Jerry show that you guys have seen together. The Uncle Jerry yeah. show. Yeah. But now we're going to do it in the Almost Made, Almost right? Made. You're, you're yeah, we've got a TV pilot coming up called Almost Made. We're going to be shooting up in Amsterdam, New York for about a week, me and Joey. Nice. I think you got to do and, something. Oh, we were that. supposed to do it at the end of this one, but I guess we're waiting. Yeah. All right, Paul, thanks for joining us, man. All right. You're, you're, you're relieved of your duties. Thank you so much, and thanks for saying the nice stuff, you know? All right. Thank you, Paul. You, God bless you. Yeah, Paul. You're looking good, too, Peter. Everybody stay, stay safe. safe man. Thank you, man. Right. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Seeing you, buddy. You. Bye. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Cut me out. That was good <laughs> to remove Paul. Okay. Uh, all right, so talk about food. What has, everybody been, what has everybody been eating here? Way too much pasta. Nice. And bread. Lots of bread. Right. Everything the opposite of what you're supposed to be eating is what we're all eating, right? Yeah. What, what's I've been a lot of lentil soup, <laughs> soup, lentil soup you know, some chicken. I just I finally discovered I don't have to make chicken cutlets every day. I can put <laughs> just chicken with like roasted peppers or like potatoes, put them in a pot with some oil and some spices, and it cooks. It does. You know right? <laughs> yeah. Did you know you don't have to make chicken cutlets all the time? <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. You didn't uh, know I, that you I, could just put cut up chicken and just clean it and throw it in a pot and it cooks? <laughs> it's pretty good. Pretty you good. didn't know that? No, Not Mike, so talk to me about your shop. And, uh, you know, uh, there is another topic I want to talk about, but I want to talk to you about your shop and stuff. So what are some of the things that are rolling out right now at your place that is just incredible? Tons and tons of fucking pasta. Yeah. Can I, can I ask Mike, where is your place? It's in Nutley. In Nutley. Oh, is it called? It's, on, it's on Harrison Street in Nutley. And what's it called? Mike's Pasta and Sandwich Shop. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's All a right. good name. I like it. <laughs> the sandwiches yeah. are absolutely incredible, man. Yeah, no, we, we've been, we probably been have sandwiches out. there, right? We do have sandwiches, yes. <laughs> so it's a, a full blown pasta production, and, and we have a deli, too. That eggplant sandwich is, is out off the charts. You know, it's it's something because <laughs> it's our number one selling sandwich and it's eggplant. Mm -hmm. But people love their eggplant, so. I like my uh, eggplant nice and crispy. Uh, so tell me about Very this crispy. Sandwich. Okay, go ahead, Mike. Talk about the eggplant sandwich. Sorry, Tim. So, uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's fried eggplant, but we cut it thicker. Mm -hmm. It's got uh, ricotta with herbs. Um, it's got a tomato jam. We cook down garlic and cumin, coriander. Uh, and then arugula with oil and vinegar. Simple, but it's just it's the combination and the dynamic of the flavors that really work. So. What kind of bread? It sounds wonderful. It's a semolina bread. Oh, oh yeah. All oh. our bread semolina bread. Oh. <laughs> you live super close, don't you? Me? Angela, aren't you super close yeah, to Nutley? Yeah. Angela, yeah. aren't you super close to Nutley? You're kind of close, aren't you? I'm close enough, man. I'll go get that sandwich. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll be in two weeks. I'll be getting that sandwich too. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, yeah, we've been cranking out a lot of pasta. We're doing pasta for Perona Farms. We're doing pasta for Fossil Farms. We're nice. doing Arians pasta. Um, we're right now, we're, we're looking to expand and to get um, much, much bigger machines so we could just crank out more volume retail, wholesale, wholesale pasta for retail. Mm -hmm. Nice. And raviolis, just shitload of raviolis. Oh. He's pumping out raviolis. Um, Agnolotis, Capalachis, just tons yeah. and tons and tons. Hey, uh, Mike, just a question. What do you recommend uh, for people that are home with a kitchen and they don't know what to do in it? You know what I mean? Like they've got all this extra stuff. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you recommend that they make? And I'm going to ask you that, Manja, because I know you've done a couple of podcasts. You have your own podcast. We'll plug that too. Uh, well, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you can talk about what other people have said. I mean, I think it, it just all depends, you know, like, like if you got, you got to get more than one thing going at a time to keep yourself busy. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I get out of the house every day. So I'm lucky because I got somewhere to go and something to do, but I can't imagine like people are stuck in a house. Like, mm -hmm. Right. So you got a slow cooker, get the slow cooker going. You got, uh, you know, 
something else, get something else, go make some pasta or make, well, don't make pasta, buy it from me. Make some sauce, <laughs> make some sauce make a, you know, but then do other things, you know, like, so, you know, you know, you know me and you know that my, my, my background is, is I'm Italian, I'm Irish time, but you know, my background is French cooking. So, yes. so when I come home, I don't cook any of that stuff. I make things like, I made like terrines and pâtés and like, because I need that outlet. So yeah. Like today, I was dehydrating ramps all day, and I made ramp powder. Mm. And like tomorrow, I'm gonna take my kids out. We're gonna go foraging. We're gonna get more ramps. You know, nice. Um, and just whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you comfortable. I think that's what everybody needs right now is comfort food. Definitely. So if, you know, spaghetti makes you comfortable. Make some spaghetti. Make some meatballs. If pate makes you comfortable, get some chicken livers and make some pate or whatever's making you comfortable. I think that's what we need right now. Yeah. Just, especially when people really, really aren't getting out of the house. You just gotta like figure out a way to not completely lose their shit totally man yeah because i would be i'd be completely i'd be fucking crazy right now if i wasn't leaving the house <laughs> I, I don't know what i would do i'd be nuts yeah manja what about you man what did you said that you've been doing some stuff like just making shit from whatever's in the house yeah a lot of that uh actually this past weekend i made a uh, pastiero di riso which is like a rice pie which came out phenomenal i followed uh my a, a, a good friend of mine's recipe and uh Oh man, it was it was delicious. It's super simple. It takes like I don't know, like uh, an hour to make. And so I mean, it's real. I mean, you know what pastiera is? Yeah, of course. Well, talk us through, Manja. Tell us, you know, for the people like for Tim, he's, what the fuck is it? <laughs> I don't know. Tim what is the is. audience that says, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, pastiera traditionally it's a, it's an Easter pie that it's a sweet Easter pie. Uh, came from the area of Naples or thereabouts, uh, the Sal Salerno area. But this particular um, uh, version is from uh, Molise, from a town called Moro uh, Morona di Del Sanio is the name of the town. It's in the Provincia di Campo Basso. And it's just pretty much arborio rice boiled. Then you mix it with ricotta cheese, um, sugar, a little bit of flour, uh, some orange blossom water. And I know I'm missing something. And then you just put it into a pie, uh, you know, into a pie crust. Bake it for forty-five minutes to an hour, and you have a delicious, uh, a, a, you know, a delicious dessert. Uh, so that's that's what I made over the weekend. That's great. Now that now that's okay. About Ten pounds per square inch. Very yeah. dense. <laughs> oh, very dense. Very dense. But but super super like sweet and deli oh man, I'm gonna have some now. As soon as as soon as, as, soon as you're done tonight, oh, I'm gonna go eat some. Yeah. I should have brought it up. I could have showed you. Um, but so this thing, right? You, 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 what, what makes that come to your brain? I'm going to make this fucking thing this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're looking for shit to do and then you just say, I'm going to make this thing. How does that come to your brain like that? Well, we, I, I had a podcast last week with, 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 with my, with one okay. of my friends that, that makes it. So he's, he was starting to ramble the recipe. I'm like, wait, 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 you got you gotta send me this recipe. So he sent it to me. He said, share it away. So I've been sharing it on on Facebook and Instagram, so people can make it make it at home themselves. Nice. How you're, about, always, you're always cooking up great stuff. I follow what you're doing on Instagram. You're always whipping up in the kitchen and all this stuff. And those, uh, I, those cookies you just those cookies. Didn't you post which, these cookies that you were able to get your hands on? They were like this big. Prob I, I, I post stuff all the time. I don't even know. Wait, remember probably. Fucking oh, yeah. sold out. It looked <laughs> ridiculous. It looked so but I did, I, I did make another easy dish. My, my cousin in Sicily, I was talking to her last week, and she said that, you know, we were talking about what, we, what we've been making and cooking and stuff, and she said she made this dish. It's a, it's a pasta al forno, so it's a baked pasta. All mm. it is, is is like ground sausage that you, that you saute, a little bit of garlic, and then in another pot, you boil water, you cook some cauliflower just until it's a little al dente. You don't want to, you don't want to get it mushad. Then in the same pot, you take out the cauliflower. Uh, you put in uh, yes, cooking channel, the cooking channel behind him. Uh, and, you boil, <laughs> and you boil the pasta. Right, nice, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> boil, the, boil the pasta. Yeah. And then you, you can either buy the bechamel or you can, you can make bechamel, which is right. bechamel sauce. You mix it all together with some mozzarella cheese, some uh, – you know, some um, Parmesan or Pecorino. I prefer I prefer Pecorino over Parmigiano. Uh, and then on the so you put it into like a baking casserole dish. You put some uh, breadcrumbs on top, pop it in the oven for like twenty minutes. It's a delicious. It's a, a delicious, easy, simple pasta al forno from Sicily. Sounds incredible. How about, how about you, Sandra and Angela? Have you been making anything uh, to go along with the, the the drinks that you that you have, Angela? Well, so I cook all the time. Um, 
and uh, I've been getting my groceries from Baldor, which is the uh, restaurant supply. They're nice. doing delivery now. So, um, yeah, I've had, um, you know, just, I've been kind of cooking pretty baller. <laughs> I've been doing, um, for Italian stuff, uh, just, I mean, I do an eggplant farm, but I use smoked mozzarella, and, you know, instead of the, fr it, like, it, and that goes really well with this wine, actually. Nice. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, homemade, I do the homemade pasta. Um, nice. Uh, mushroom ragu, probably, because I have a bunch of mushrooms in the fridge. Um, just... I've been, I've been like the instant pot. I'll throw like lentil soup in the instant pot, you know, right. whatever, like like sausage or bacon or whatever I have to like give it a little bit of you know, flavor or whatever. Um, but as far like I do, I did handmade tortillas the other day. We smoked nice. a, this one's from Texas, so we smoked a brisket. Sure. Sure. Right. Glasses. Um, I had this like really beautiful fatty brisket. It was smoking and delicious. Mm. So, I broke that down a little bit and made handmade big flour tortillas and some brisket tacos. That oh, sounds out. amazing. Yeah. Now this is something you would normally not make. Well, actually, it, it is. I just wouldn't be doing it all right on top of each other. Like right. every, yeah. you know, every you know, back when life was normal, I would cook at home five nights a week and we would go out twice. And you know, like that was that was kind right. of the regular. But the you know the Tuesday night is Pasta and sardines, or pasta yeah. and whatever, you know, something real simple. Amatrishan um, or um, putanesca, whatever. That's, that's like Tuesday night. Right. You know, or Sunday night, rather, or something, you know, like all day. And we would go out, you know, Saturday night. But now it's just, I'm just, I'm, um, my husband's working from home, so I'm making lunch and dinner every day. Otherwise, I would go batshit crazy with nothing to do. Yeah. I mean, I could clean the house, but, you know. No, that's still not fun. That's right. not fun. No. Sandra, what about you? Are you making some stuff? Is your dad making some stuff? I think I've cooked once since I've been here. Um, oh. I'm, I'm with my parents. My parents, if you guys don't all know, they were born in Campania. And not, my mom's from Napoli, from like Romero. And my dad is from Calpisi Benevento. Um, so they've been doing all the cooking. I made Zuni cafes. I try to make Zuni cafes chicken. One. Oh, God, I love that. Other than that, they're making um, bolognese, brajol, uh, parmesan, zucchini parmesan, the, 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 every, home bread, everything nonstop we're eating but today it's the same routine so we eat like animals you know all the time weekend blah 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 T mondays is diet so today we had shkalol and beans shkalol and mm. beans and my father's eating he's like hey, vedur, vedur, the green the green on monday so and then we'll start again tomorrow he already got some meat for some steaks da, da, da. so no but what i have been eating I'm like going back to my college days. I found there's a great little. Do you guys know A and S? A and S Deli. There's yeah, like a yeah. A okay. and S. Okay, so the brother Mario uh, it has a, a spot. One of the original brothers, Mario, came and opened up a spot in Fort Mar Myers called Mario's. So uh, he's adorable. The place is great. So we'll drive to Fort Myers, which is like 20 minutes away. We'll stock up on the you know sausage ring, the pork, the brajol, blah blah blah, whatever. And mozzarella, all that. So they had, do you remember the Stelladora S cookies? Yeah. Yes. I miss those. Yeah. Are they still around? <laughs> hey, guys, we got Lance Applebaum going to join us here, who is from Fossil Farms. So we're going to add him to the mix here. Sorry about that, Sandra. Go ahead. No, no problem. So <laughs> Stelladora, their version, Mario's makes their version of the S biscotti. With those with Nutella, if you haven't tried it, mm. I highly recommend mm. you try S cookies with Nutella. That's been my late night snack. Mm. Amazing. So no, I haven't been cooking. Fucking blew my mind. <laughs> I've never thought to do that. And, if you're, and just, you know, this if you're a little drunk when you have it. I'm a little drunk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's out. It's the best experience of your life. <laughs> One of the best. One of the best. <laughs> yeah. All right, Tim, what about you, man? What now listen, you're you're not the, you know, you're not the culinary or wine expert. You are the center square today. <laughs> uh, what do you what have you been making at home? So uh, I've been 
in a sense, trying every different way to cook an egg just because I found that they're the easiest to find. And um, I don't know, you know, I have always done like, you know, obviously the scrambled over easy, so inside up. Right. I've been doing that. And then uh, I was at the store the other day and they were selling quail eggs. I was like, let's oh. do it. Let's, let's throw that in the mix. And I tried quail eggs for the first time. So that was fun. And, and trying to do kind of the same styles of eggs, but in quail egg form. Hmm. Yeah. Like Lance is the perfect person to talk. Yeah. Where did you get those quail eggs from? Uh, I got them from uh, the. What's and I don't called? think Lance can. He, can Farmers you hear market. us, Lance? Can you hear Farmers us? Farmers Market in um, in Glen Rock. They're good. <laughs> I, recommend, I, I recommend it. Lance looks like he's taking a test. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He's taking a test. Yeah. We can't hear you, Lance. We cannot hear you. Look, he's always pissed. Look at this. <laughs> this must be like when he finds out the quail eggs aren't coming in. Not the fuck. <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. There he is. No. Nope. Connecting to audio. No. This is the this is the life. Can you imagine what this is gonna be like in board like this is fun. We're all hanging out and chatting, but can you imagine boardroom meetings over Zoom and the, <laughs> the guy can't connect to the audio? <laughs> Well, while he's he's connecting, can I ask you guys, as as Italians here, I we, love we that. Start, I love that you are asking a question. Whatever happens, happens in this room. Go ahead. You can ask us anything. Um, uh, so my fiance was making some vodka sauce. I like the I like the I liked how you dropped my fiance. That was very nice. Yeah, I threw it in there. You, you yeah. know, I peppered it in. Um, and she was making some delicious uh, uh, vodka sauce. But is there a way <laughs> that you guys recommend to make the the best vodka sauce? Because we made it in like a, a pot, slow cooked it, kind of all day kind of thing. Okay. But would you recommend like more of a can kind of thing, or what, what, what's your what's your vibe? Boy, everybody is the people look like they're ready to kill you. But you <laughs> like there was violence out of the chefs. <laughs> well, that is not a slow cook thing, but I'll let Mike handle this one. Okay. <laughs> so stainless steel, uh -huh. prosciutto fat, nice Oop. prosciutto fat. So you got to, I mean, you put the prosciutto in there too, but you want to get the fattiest piece, and you want to get that rendered down. Okay. Onions, vodka, and then you want to use like really nice tomato. Can yeah, you obviously you can use canned tomatoes because they're in season. So if you find San Marzano's, you find San Marzano's. There's a guy in Jersey that's growing San Marzano's. He's packing them. They're called Jersey Fresh San Marzano's. Hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a big red label. It says Jersey Fresh on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tomatoes, you go with those. Um, and then you got you to gotta crush them first. So we put them to, you know, if you got a, you got a food mill or a ricer, if not, just smash them, squeeze them, squeeze the shit out of them. Yeah. Nice. And then time, four hours. You want to let it cook for like four hours. Slow cook. And leave the lid off because you want to, the whole point is you got to get that citric acid. If the citric acid has to come out. It's got to, that's what makes it sweet. Did you know that, Tim, about the citric acid? I did not know about the citric acid. <laughs> I know you had to get the vodka out and that, that's basically about it. But like... As far as like, I'm trying to think of like the best way to put this. Like, what what's the most you want to put in in using this in a pan in a pot? What are we talking here? Uh, what? I guess, I guess it's depending. <laughs> on, I guess it's depending on volume of how much you want to make. But like, yeah. I mean, like if you go to the supermarket, they have little littler cans. You know, they're like they're like yay big, right? Those yeah. those are called those are called number eights. If you get a number 10 can, which is like more of a uh, commercial industrial size can, mm -hmm. you only really need one of those. Nice. Know? I mean, when, when no. we make it at the shop, we're using two cases. But. No, I'm saying like as far as from for the cooking perspective, do you do, you do it? What's what's your um, can, like more of a pan or, or a pot? Or what, no, no, what no, 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 pot. It's got to be stainless steel. You stainless can't steel. Use, use aluminum, you get there's, an, there's absorbic acid in tomatoes and aluminum reacts with absorbic acid. It makes mm. a funny taste. You get that like weird shitty metallic taste. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Lance, are you with us? Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, yeah, we can not hear you right. now. Yes. What do you say tease, bro? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, it looked like you were doing a test before. Um, <laughs> hey, Tim uh, was talking about quail eggs. Tim is the center square for you. Um, <laughs> what, what, uh, what is your thoughts on quail eggs and, uh, you know, what eggs – I guess, do you have, because, you know, Lance is fossil farms. He deals in a lot of game meat, but a lot of, a lot of everything, I would say. Uh, what eggs are you recommending to people now? Well, I got, I mean, so Brett, you know, we have a lot of talented people on the staff and today they made a, uh, they made a hot pocket with a duck egg and hey. Gotham Road farm eggs, but duck eggs, 
Like you just brought up eggs and I'm just going duck eggs. Yeah. Duck eggs with a hot pocket. Mm-hmm. Pork sausage, scallions. Oh, it was, it was, was good. Incredible. But as far as quail eggs, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Is there, so everybody who's drinking here, cheers to the, those that are drinking and we'll just keep talking here. But I just wanted to make sure that we did that because we didn't do it at the top. So cheers. Yeah. I have a question to Lance here. Is this That's coming from? The, this feels very much like a press conference for Lance. <laughs> well, it's tremendous. We're doing a lot of happy, fossil farms now. It's happy, tremendous. Happy Monday. Happy I Monday. Just to happy tell Monday. you that you could inject it. You could inject the duck egg. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. You could inject the duck egg or an ostrich egg. Let's do an ostrich egg. What you got, Tim? Uh, so I, I obviously you're dealing with uh, a lot of uh, interesting meats and whatnot. I know that there was the, one of the news stories today was that one of the largest chicken distributors was saying that there was going to be a meat shortage and whatnot. How has uh, this whole thing uh, kind of affected you? Oh, it's a good, great question. Yeah, it's a good question. It, it hasn't affected us. I don't see it affecting us, but it's definitely going to affect, I think, the commodity market that's out there. Um, a couple of these larger players like JBS and, and Smithfield and some of these other ones, even the chicken plants are, are getting, are getting some of the diseases and it's just, um, mm. it, you know, I'm in a way, it, chickpeas, man. Hey, hey, we got it. We got it. Well, not chickpeas, but we got plenty of chicken, but I tell yeah. you, um, what it's doing for the small farmers and for the farmer's market is actually good. it's good because people are getting scared and they're like saying like, Oh, I can't go get my food, but they're, 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 go into the local sources now so if anything you know on a big scale not good on a smaller scale we begin yeah okay mike on that note here we go i've been waiting for this yeah ruth chris oh <laughs> has to give back all of the money that they that they got from the small business administration. I want to get everyone's thoughts on that. But Ooh. wait, 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 wait. Has to has to give back. Well, th- I'm sure that's how they feel. I sure. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, okay, but before we get into Ruth, Chris, our friend Gennaro Pecchia posted that Italy not only yeah. got SBA money, yeah. but also ran a fucking GoFundMe. Yeah. For employees. employees. Go ahead. No, you got to let Mike, you got to let Mike, he's the stone cold Steve Austin of this issue. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we bring you on, man. We bring you on for this. Yeah. I saw a list the other day of the top 50 people or companies that got the money and they're shell companies, right? So they're all different names than the actual companies. So, you know, the company names that we know, Cruz, Chris, Applebee's, Chevy's, you know, um, fucking Danny Myers and Shake Shacks and all that. They're all, they're all, muted by the, the mother companies that actually filed and got all the money. So that's why it's even kind of trickling out now that all these different companies are getting all of this money. Right. And they're taking it away from the small business and they're playing the Robert, they're, they're, they're playing the, the, the fucking classic PR playbook. Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to give it back. We're going to be the nice guy. It's like, fuck you. Every time you take $10 million, like I said the last time, you're screwing, you know, a thousand restaurants mm. out of their $10,000 PPP. And you're yeah. screwing a thousand small businesses, whether it's a restaurant or not a restaurant, because the, the PPP isn't isn't isolated to not restaurant a restaurant industry PPP, yeah. right? You got these bigger companies, these bigger restaurant companies that are just really just decimating. You got, I mean, all artists, you know, tattoo artists and hairstylists, and everyone, yes. barbers and everybody, they're porn all, actors. Just kidding. <laughs> porn actors. Well, you know, they're probably still. I'm just it kidding. I was be, just being silly. Hey Pete, all right, I'm sorry. Pete, you know what it should be for Pete? Yeah, it should be for companies that make under a certain amount of money. Has to be. That gets the loan. How is it not fucking that from the beginning? And it can't be traded on the stock market. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. Exactly, Joe. That's right. the thing. Right. right. That's a good point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Publicly they're, traded company. They're all public that's, I wouldn't consider that a small business any day of the week. So I, mean, I don't know how these people, you know, whoever's oh, giving this out is like, uh, Ruth Chris, yes, approved. You know what I mean? And it's not like you're saying, it's not even Ruth, Ruth Chris that pops in. It's some other larger conglomerate name and you still give them this money? Now, I want to, because this whole room is full of Italians and we all have probably visited Italy at some point. What does that do for you? Tony Manja, I'm calling you on the carpet, who interviewed Lydia Bastianich on his podcast. 
What is your thoughts, you know, about this Italy debacle? To be honest, I haven't been following it. I'm going to be very honest. I, I, to be honest, I don't, I don't watch the news anymore. I don't follow okay. any of this. Well, here's, good for you. Here, here, good for you. But now here's what's happened. I'm, I'm giving you the news. React. Mike's uh, got uh, Italy hand. is saying what? that they got money. They've got, they got the money from the PPP. And then they also ran a GoFundMe for their employees. They've got, they got millions of dollars from the PPP. And they still pretended, I don't know if pretend's the right word, but they still were claiming hardships for the employees. Well, what, well, what is the PPP? Is that Paycheck Protection? Paycheck Program. Protection. Program. Yes. And who does, that, who does that benefit? It's supposed to benefit small businesses that have, in essence, under 500 employees per unit, which is a really weird and fucked up way to word it. Different LLC names. But does it does it does it help the the employer or the employee? Well, I would imagine it helps the employee if you actually use the ten million dollars for your employees. But yeah. since you're going for a GoFundMe, it appears that you are not using the money for employees. Because why would you need a GoFundMe for the employees if you've used the PPP for what it's actually supposed to be for? Right. So, so you can use the PPP for the payroll. For mm -hmm. your rent for two months, for yeah. your rent for two it's months. It's shown for your business. No, 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 no. no. Right. You only so the way the PPP works is, is they're giving you there's there's a, there's an equation, mm -hmm. there's an algorithm for it based on your your uh, your monthly payroll. payroll, and it's it's said in the applications that you're allowed to allocate the funds that you, if you're approved and given, you're allowed to allocate those funds towards payroll, utilities, and and rent, and that's mm -hmm. it. Can't use it for and health insurance and health insurance as well. Uh, yes, not, I didn't yes. Read it. You, you saw it in yours. And, and, and health as health insurance for eight weeks, eight weeks worth of health insurance. <clears throat> you know how some words uh, like from the old days have disappeared, and you're like, oh, we don't say that no more. I can't wait for fucking algorithm to go away. <laughs> I've literally have heard that word like ten times this week. Why the fuck is everything on an algorithm? Can it just be normal? What is it? You know, thanks Google. Right. Yes. Okay. Sandra, what's your thoughts on Italy? Because Tony Manja, he just wimped out and didn't answer the question. I, I think I'm going to want to offend Lydia. I think I'm going to pull a Tony Manja too. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, Mike, so, Mike so, Carino, the only one going head to head with Italy. Hey, you want to know what I think? Yeah. Joe, what do you think? What I well, think what I is, say is that wait, I wait, never wait. liked eating at Ruth Chris anyway. Okay. I'll never eat there again, ever. I okay. mean, Ruth Chris, I mean, I, mean, again, I agree with you. Santa they better change the name because nobody's going to eat there ever again. Chris Ruth. I'll try to fool you, everybody. We open Santa Margarita, Ruth Chris. Chris. Ruth Chris, to me, it's in the same category. Same all right, yeah. so like that, that's, that says it all. Italy, honestly, I was really never a fan anyway. Um, I have ADD. Like, all, it's too chaotic for me. Like, that, I, I like super small, like, Mike, what you're doing, like, I, I am a big fan of really small, um, where the owner comes out and, like, I just, I'm not, never into that big, over-the-top thing, so. Uh, and listen, I, I don't want to attack Lydia Bastianich by any means. I do love her. I do, she's I, in, I, a, I do she's love in a corporation, and sometimes she's this, goes, this goes beyond the individuals that, uh, that run these organizations. You know, sometimes they don't have any clue that, that a GoFundMe has started at the same time as uh, the PPP. She might not even know about any of that. Perhaps, yeah, yeah. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but it's a bad look on Italy, Ruth Chris, and Shake Shack, who is really scrambling, <laughs> you know. Angela, what you got? Okay, so Shake Shack gave it back, and they were the first ones. Danny Meyer was the first one to give it back. It, it ran out of funds, and he was like, okay, take, you know, we took 10 million, but okay, you're happy. He's a hero. Let's let's uh, let's put him ahead of the first responders, Danny Meyer. <laughs> right. Yeah. First to get caught. Let's run the uh, let's run the the uh, parade for him for giving his money back. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, right. So, I mean, I'm sure it was just a bad look. So he knew that. He, I mean, he's a consummate PR guy. So, I mean, he knew that. Um, with Italy, like, so a dear friend of mine was a, a sommelier at Del Posto, and had. Uh, had worked in New Jersey up until going to Del Posto and um, was not at Del Posto long enough to be able to get unemployment. Oh. Right. So like, here's a guy who's like just completely screwed work for right now until, you know, things start opening back up again. 
but Del Pozo was closed and they were like the first, they were one of the first ones to close. So, I mean, there are a lot of people that work there. Yeah. And that, you know, whatever, I mean, if they were getting PPP for, to hang on to those, to those people, then, you know, I have no problem with, with, you know, that, you know, them getting paid. Italy, I'm sure there are probably more than a thousand people have to work. Well, and I think there's multiple Italy's. I don't, I think there's one in New York. I think there's one out here in LA. So I think there's a, a few, a few Italy's. I don't think there's just one anymore. Small. I mean, they're, you know, so they're, they're definitely not small. No. Publicly treated, you yeah. know, um, and it's like, they're not quite Shake Shack. Now, you know, I do, I don't know. I mean, I don't think that, uh, I don't, I mean, like with the Shake Shack and Ruth Chris, obviously that's, that's ridiculous. And certainly the, the small- Are you giving Italy a, a pass because they're Italian? <laughs> Are you doing a mafia thing? Oh, You're not. in the family, it's all right, don't worry about them. I'm not giving them a pass, but I can imagine that a lot of people are out of work. And yeah. I mean, sure, Lydia's got plenty of money, but she doesn't have enough money to pay a thousand people out of her pocket indefinitely. You know what I mean? Like that's, you know. Yeah. And definitely not, but she, I mean, look, I don't know that they needed both. I think they could have had a PPP and maybe skip the GoFundMe. So here's the thing about the GoFundMe though. How much are people really getting into, getting to those? Because I mean, my, I know a lot of like, I have a lot of restaurant friends and I'm really worried about all of them. And that was yes. my, that was my social life was going to restaurants and that my work yeah. life. Going to going to visit customers and you know showing support and you know spreading the love, so that you know every single one of them started to go fund me. I couldn't afford to give everybody. Mm. You know I mean, like I couldn't afford to give everybody ten bucks. Yeah, you know, per load too. So yeah, you know, the GoFundMe and all the re- and all the people really getting it. Right. 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 How are they splitting up that GoFundMe money? Are they sending out a check to all the busboys and waiters and sous chefs and this, that's that, and the other question. thing? Or they're keeping it for rent. Right. The right. really person point. that's in charge of it. Yeah. Uh, Tony Monge just sent a message here from, who is this, Tony? Louis uh, Campos. He really wow. wants to say it twice now. Luis, I own a, Luis. What's up, Luis? Luis? He owns a small restaurant, and he still didn't get any money yet. So that's, that's what's happening. But... Um, Lydia got hers. No offense. He's got a great restaurant, by the way, in Newark. An awesome Brazilian meets Portuguese. Mm. I don't even know how to say it. Sabor Unido. It's fantastic. BYO. It's one of my go-to spots. Really, really, really good. So um, that sucks. <laughs> working that's at the the yeah, our, our system's so fucked up. Hey, Joe, 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 let me ask you this. In terms of the stand-up comedy world that you were doing, right, um, what does that look like for you in returning to a, a nightclub? Do you think that's going to happen anytime soon? Do you think people are going to go in droves, much like restaurants? Do you think people are going to run out and sit in a comedy club all together watching, uh, watching something? No. <laughs> well, that's why I'm doing it online now, you know? I mean, I don't think people are going to come out soon. I think they have to get some medicine or... A, va- a vaccine for this coronavirus and then I guess everybody will be back to normal once the va- vaccine comes out and people think that you know all right we took the vaccine we're going to be good but I mean until then I think a lot of people ain't going to do a lot of things people ain't going to go see sports people ain't going to Broadway you know people might not even go to restaurants to be honest with you unless they have it like separated out and like I was talking to, my, to someone about this. They basically need to have plates, like disposable plates, disposable uh, cups, disposable everything. You come in, you get it in a bag, you put it on your table, and then when you're done, they throw it out and they bring something new in. They spray down the table. But that costs money to do. Yeah. So I mean, and then you're paying rent. What are, they're going to have to lower the rents where you're getting the restaurant out of. I don't know if it's feasible to make money. All this PPP they're giving out, they might be giving it out, but – in a couple of months, they're going to have to give it out again because basically they're going to still be losing, losing money. What are they going to do? No. And it's not really not enough for the restaurant. There's, there's, there's not enough money to give out. That yeah. is the problem, you know? And like you said, but now, now here's another good question. With all these guys giving back tens of millions of dollars, where is that now going? To who, right? It's Lance, go to Lewis. 
Lance, what? Yeah, it should go to, to it's administrative to, limbo. Yeah. <laughs> Lance, in your industry, I mean, you said you're doing okay, but I'm sure that it's still a struggle for you in terms of the restaurant portion of your yeah, business. Definitely. Yeah, no, there is there is no restaurant portion of the business right. currently, you know. Can't wait, looking forward for them to get back. But it's, you know, when when is the light at the end of the tunnel? When is the when is the magic day that restaurants can open fine dining at least again? It's uh it's when when everybody feels comfortable going out to eat again, you know. That's that's the big question. But I have a I have a question going back to the Ruth Chris thing. Yeah. Let me ask, you, let me ask the the panel a question. Sure. Let's say Ruth Chris. Let's forget about Ruth Chris. Ruth Chris has some franchisees, okay? And a franchise owner who has 50 employees now can I get access to that money? Mm. What's your thought on that? Mm. It's, a, it's it's a very it's a it's a it's a good devil's advocate point for sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's complicated, you know, that just like I, I think the Italy thing is, is complicated. But as far as, I mean, Bruce, Chris, they have something like $100 million in the bank. Yeah. So, you know, corporate like, stores. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's a double-edged sword. It, it's, it's, for a while. it's not a clean uh, system, even, even the way that this PPP... Uh, the the loan protection the the disaster loans you know it's it's a great it's a great thought in theory it's a great idea but you know the banks if you if anybody was talking to the banks like they weren't ready for this nobody no was ready for this and and the reality is is that you hear in the news Italy and and Ruth Chris and Shake Shack they all got the loans the big loans because of course they're big customers to the big banks you know so right. they're they're going to get that stuff quick. Um, I think this round that that's in there today is um, is still not going to be clean, but hopefully it's something. I mean, we're in the process of it. We're, everything is still oh. in process, but nevertheless, um, something something is better than nothing. So the reality is, if you ask me, like you asked me before, I would much rather it four weeks from now, five weeks from now, when we know that restaurants are going to ramp up and we can bring people back and. Um, all those things, but you know, the reality is, I'd rather take something than nothing. And the way I look at it is, for two months, I'm getting some of my tax money back. You know, well, you know what it is, too, Pete. Yeah. A lot of people ain't gonna want to go back to work because I don't know. I'm sure you know the federal government's giving you an extra six hundred dollars on top of your unemployment. Yeah. We're having that problem now. Guys that yeah. are waiters that are making like they're staying home and they're getting eleven hundred a week. They're like, I don't want to go back to work till the six hundred runs out. I got people that work in hair salons. They're making like a thousand. You know, same thing. And they're like, I break the same thing when I go to work. They don't even want to go to work. They're happy staying home. They're just bored out of their head. I mean, how are you gonna get people to work for you? Come on. It's true. We had two, yeah, we had two people, people come back and work for you, or they want to stay home. Yeah, we had two people not show up to work because they wanted that benefit. You wow! Know? And 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 we're trying to hire people now, and that's hard. Four million people out of out of work. Nobody wants a job right now. So that's very interesting. I, I, but I think also people are a little afraid, though. To be to be to be very honest, of they, going to work. they they don't they yeah, going to work, and true. not not that they don't want to work. Uh, I know that there was a construction company around here that one of the guys died and they refused to go back to work. So they, they, they had to take off those two weeks and do, and do nothing because they were just afraid that they were going to catch this disease. I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, you don't really know what's, what's going on with this disease. Every day there's a new symptom. There's a new, uh, do we know that it came from a bat? Is that what we're, we if all somebody believe? says that one more time. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it happened? Where China, did this man. virus it come from? It came from China. Right, China. Yeah. China, China, China. Yeah. Wuhan. 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 I think Nancy Pelosi put it in America, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think it came out of an ice cream, one of her ice cream uh, bars or something like that. <laughs> well, Lance, I have a question for Lance. I mean, as a, as a person who, you know, obviously deals with animals and, and, and interesting meats and whatnot. Like, what is your, your view on the whole, like, people, like, being all against, you know, all this, the, you know, the wet markets and all that stuff like that? Well, Lance yeah, is you not know, in the wet market business. Well, no, it's we, not. It, we, yeah, everything I don't, we do. I'm sorry, I don't want yeah. to you know, escape it <laughs> too, but, uh, Thanks, yeah. Tim. That's a really appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, how's, your wet, know, how's your wet market business? How's your wet market business? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a good question because the word exotic comes crazy about that. Yeah, no, no. I, 
we've always I've always been against that. I've always I've always known about that in China. But if, again, if somebody says that this came from a bat, I mean, it, it's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. They've been doing it that way. Not to say that it's the right way, mm. um, but you know, there was probably a five minute concern that I had when this first came out. Like, oh, is everybody going to see the word exotic meat mm-hmm. and tie that to my game meats? Right now, you know, um, the reality is that the consumers they've been a lot more knowledgeable uh, in today's day, and they know that what we're doing, what the rest of the United States is doing, it's clean. I mean, everything that we do is clean, but. Um, I just read an article the other day, like China reopened up those those markets. It's fucking what are they, crazy. What are they thinking? What are yeah, they, that's crazy. Do, 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 you know? you, do, you, do you all really think this came from an animal? <laughs> I knew no <laughs> way. <laughs> Here we go. Hold on. Oh, I think it was no. a... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Way. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, you're getting new glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's going incognito. Oh, well, let's pause. Didn't, right. Peter, didn't you have... Didn't you have the conspiracy show the other night? Though? We did. Have the conspiracy. <laughs> was that for that one? Well, that that did come up and, Tim, and Tim led the conspiracy show in a hot way. But we did we did talk about this uh, this virus and perhaps that it was made. You know? Perhaps. Well, I said perhaps because I'm the host and I have to say perhaps. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Sorry, right. it's not what going viral. Your- yeah. This this is not going to go viral. No, well, you never know. <laughs> yeah. so unintended. Yeah. Uh, what's your thoughts, Mike? Do you think that this is a man-made, uh, more man-made virus? I know we're kind of off the path of food and wine here, but why not? If if you don't take it into, if you don't take it as a consideration, then we're all really blind. Yeah. Right. Just because somebody licked a, a pangolin or ate a bat. Listen, Ozzy Osbourne bit the head off a <laughs> bat 30 years ago, 40 years sure. ago. Right. You didn't sure. cause any viral global pandemic. Sure. Eating oh. corona. It happened. I'm just saying there are things that are out there that are said that we create weaponized versions of mutated viruses, and then we can sell them just like we sell missiles, tanks, fire planes and all the other shit we sell and we do the same stupid shit as we've done since the beginning of time Mm. and we have sold weaponized viruses to china in other administrations full well in knowing they didn't have the technology or the capability of controlling and handling these types of viruses we full well and knew that this shit was going to get out it was just a question of when it was going to come to our doorstep and when it did, mm. that fucking Cheeto wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Sandra, what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> totally change the subject. And no, I love it. I, I, two comments and one question. Oh, I love it. Go ahead. All right. I like it. Two comments, one question. I think Comment Sandra and I should do the shows together every night. Yes. <laughs> Comment for one. Tim, you're the perfect center square. I've been watching the whole night. You know, you're, you're with the backgrounds, the, the roots. Yeah, he's on it. Italy, the wine cellar, love it. Perfect. That's why we put Tim in the middle. And you're dressed so He's dapper. the monkey in the middle. <laughs> he's the bottom left for you. me. <laughs> Yo, you have to tell me what your secret is with your backgrounds. Your skin is glowing. That blue background, your skin is glowing right now. I need to know how to do that for the Goes at the beach. Yeah, his skin is glowing. It's perfect. Okay, probably the light. It's the light that's up here. Nice. It's hurt. Your skin looks amazing. It's dewy. (laughs) It's dewy fresh. Thank you. I've been told that by the make couple of makeup artists. It's very (laughs) dewy. We're. I'm always trying to achieve the dewy look. Okay. Now this is gonna make me sound maybe stupid, ignorant. I've never had Shake Shack ever. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Comment. It's please. disgusting. The Don't panel. eat it. Um, listen, yeah. when I go to City Field, oh. I'm gonna comment. When I go, you, when I go to City Field, I love a Shake Shack burger. Oh. I, love, I love the Smoke Shack. I think the Smoke Shack is banging. But he's shaking his head. Uh, Mike shaking his head. No, I'm but I love. I, there's so many burgers I like better than Shake Shack. Five Guys are better. Okay. I've never, I don't really eat big. Burger. I've never had Five Guys either. So is it? Smash so- burger. I like Five Guys. Uh, I, like- I like Bobby's Burger Palace better oh, than I like Shake <laughs> Shack. Better than I like Steak Shack. Yeah. Mike, oh, Mike, good. Mike, I got to hear it. I know you want to say something. Shake Shack. Is the burger good? Get it or- out, baby. 
In and Out Burgers. Oh, I mean In and Out is. If in I and know. Out. In and Out. In and Out. In and Out. Gorilla had... Style. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what do you got, Mike? You never had a Gorilla Style, Pete? Oh, definitely. I think oh, I thought okay. you said Corona Style. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, what, where where are you going for a burger? Mike, we lost your audio, bud. Can you hear me? Yeah, now you're. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't eat beef anymore, so I'm wow, going. Oh, that's going shocking. <laughs> I stopped Mike, eating. You had a whole fucking thing of pork sausages and that's pork, dude. That's not beef. Okay, okay, so just beef meat in general. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean. Okay. Okay. So you're not saying you're a vegetarian? I, I, I took it the wrong way. I, I just, I just, I just, I just choose not to. Eat. The only beef I eat is is uh, is pho broth, uh -huh. beef broth. Nice. Okay. So, but prior to you, when you did eat meat, yeah, burgers, yeah, was a Shake Shack burger where you were going or no? I never, I never liked Shake Shack. Yeah, never liked it. Smash burger. Salty. Smash burger. I never had I like, any of those. I like hey, Smash burger. Pete, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you know the difference between a chickpea and a green pea? <laughs> What's that? Is this gonna? What? Go ahead. I never had a green pea on me before. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, got it. it. Took me a couple seconds. <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, no, it's corny, all right? <laughs> no, fuck, I love it. All right. Uh, Lance, what's your take on the Shake Shack burger? Not a fan. No, no. I'm with I, can't, I can't finish one. And uh, Is it salty, because fatty? it's a patty that's like flattened? Is that what the problem is that you guys have? No, because Smash Burger smashed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not supposed to be a burger is not supposed to be smashed. I mean, you could have this conversation all night, but yeah, I, yeah, not a, not a, not a Shake Shack fan. No, no, no. Hey, Tony Mons, we're putting you in the hot seat. Steve's Burgers, Garfield, no, New Jersey. No. Thank you for diverting to Steve's. But what what do you think about a Shake Shack burger? No, I mean, like I said, I, I if I if I'm have a choice, I'm going to go to Steve's. I'm not going to go to Shake Shack. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Angela, where are you going? What do you think about Shake Shack burgers? Well, um, I like the chicken sandwich at Shake Shack. Yeah, no, the chicken sandwich is good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's actually something to have there. Um, I've only been to Shake Shack twice, so, you know. Uh, burgers, again, I'm going to, like, I'm going to get a big hunk of, like, a really nice piece of chuck from... A, you know, a good butcher, and I'm going to grind it at home, and I'm going to make it just so. I do, <laughs> I do feel like there's something about making burgers at home that are way better than. I have a question. Oh boy. I have a comment. I have a okay. comment. Okay. Okay. I have to say the Piedmontese, the the Piedmontese beef from Lance, sick, amazing. Some sure. of the best. So sure. literally, some of the best beef I've ever had in my life. So Lance, where right. do I get your stuff? Uh, you come to the store, you go online. Where's where, the store? where do you live? Where do you live, Anson? West Orange. Come, come up and visit. You're 15 minutes away. Okay, where, so what's the name of your store? Booten. It's Fossil Farms Market and Kitchen. Fossil Farms. Booten. Yeah. Well, come, come in there tomorrow. Us. Where are you? Oh, that'd be, see, that's awesome. Come I'm visit I'm in maple us. shade right now. Am I far? Yeah. No, no, you're in the beach right now. That's where you are. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in quarantine anymore. Nobody is. No, but no, he, Tony Mange is right. I mean, the Piedmontese beef is without a doubt the best beef I've ever had. Hands well, down. even you have so many interesting things there. You know, even the bison burgers are, are mm -hmm. incredible and whatnot. So, I mean, I, I love that, you know. Yeah, bison, uh, like, but there's something about that beef, though. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it's like... It's soft. It's, it's a very it's soft. Sweet. It's, 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 you got to yeah. get the ostrich. That's what, they're, like, that's what they're all about. And that's, that's what, what I started I, with. I told you, uh, Lance, I told uh, Mike and the group at one point that this goes way back to high school. We had had to and welcome Chris Rockwell to the convert to the mix here at the Battle Royal. Uh, oh, I told these guys that I remember one time we were in high school. I feel like it was high school. It was and, after, right after high school. Yeah, so I ran into you somewhere, and you, maybe a movie, the movie theater, or whatever, and you were off on a whole thing about ostrich, uh, and I and I, I like this is uh, thirty fuck. twenty. How many years ago is this that we went and graduated twenty something years ago? And twenty, it was yeah, twenty twenty six years ago, and it was probably twenty twenty five years ago. And you were we, all about the ostrich, ostrich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I went on a ski vacation I, out in Colorado. I tried ostrich and I was just, I was hooked. It was natural. It was clean. It tasted like beef. I'm like, I got to do this. I got to, this is, this is awesome. What's yeah. the best way to cook an ostrich? The burger. R Lance. Rare, medium rare, over the grill, salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil on it. Mm. Take it off before it becomes medium rare or it's going to taste like shoe leather. Oh, really? So, but like Sandra, Mike said, exactly Sandra what are you recommending with ostrich? I put her in the hot seat. Actually, she just went like that. I was really in my ADD zone for like half a second there. Um, so I ostrich, really, really don't eat ostrich, but I would say, Angela, help you... me out. Maybe like a nice burgundy. I think Sandra just, well, that, we phoned a friend a there. You phoned a friend. Germain. Say it again, Joseph? What do you say, Joseph? Pinot Grigio or Jermaine would go. <laughs> What's the other one? Anna Margarita. Anna Margarita. <laughs> Anna Margarita, super ice cold. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, okay, you, we've well, mentioned none. We've we've mentioned this wine a couple of times, and now that's it. We're gonna just address the the elephant in the room <laughs> with the San Margarita. <laughs> the San Margarita. We'll do a whole Santa Margarita episode next time, please. No, okay, we can do that, but I just briefly want you to say what is it to the both of these? What is it about that wine that you both absolutely hate and despise? Okay. It's, like it's at Sandra Zadi. You can find her on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't, I don't hate and despise. I like, like, I'm like a weirdo. Like I never use the word hate like this so no. Dislike, strongly dislike and don't really recommend is what I, that's, you know. So it's not, if you drink it and you love it, good. That, 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 all I care about is for people to really enjoy what they're drinking and whatever. But to me, it's mass produced. It's like what kind of we were saying before, Ruth, Chris and all that. It's just mass produced. It's really taste, no, it tastes like nothing. Have you ever tasted? Yeah. It's, it's it's just uh, boring and dull, and there's no life to it. When I drink wine, I want the story. Oh, who's picking the grapes? What plot of land is it coming from? What is the grandmother making in the kitchen or the father doing? What's happening? I don't want to know that machines are, now I get excited. Oh, I oh wow. Are <laughs> <We're> harvesting <laughs> the grapes? Like, I, I want the story, I want the romanticism. That's why I'm in this industry. If I want to drink nothing, water, I'll just pour myself a seltzer Pellegrino and call it a day. That's it. So what I was saying before about Vedica and Vedica, and this is, I swear, they're not paying me to do this by any stretch. Promo, promo. I always wish that they were, really. Yeah, yeah I think they'd be better. Uh, I just want, I like the whole, I was raised in a home where, you know, I said to you last time, I say my career in wine began at the age of five when I was introduced to my first Piccirino Divino Rosso at the dinner table. I like the whole story, the whole culture behind it. I, I love like that. It. Hence the reason I've never been to Shake Shack or what's the other burger place we're talking about. Like I, I like small family owned, I love well made, Passionate, anything, food, wine, music, it's got to be about passion. That's all I have to say. Right. I and I feel like somebody in one of our record chats, Tim, made the comment that they lived inside the record, right? Like they listened to the record so much that it became a part of their being. And, there, and, and I do think food and drink does that as well. I think there are certain meals and restaurants uh, and definitely drink for sure that you lived inside of for a period of time. So I appreciate what you said about the story. Uh, Angela, I want to ask you that as well. I want to ask you, what is it about the San Margarita? I don't know. That, I, think, I think Sandra just kind of nailed it. Uh, oh, she certainly did. No, no question. Um, it's, first of all, it's overpriced. Um, it's very manipulated. So like when a lot of, um, a lot of like big, big name mass, like mass produced, but right. So they needed to taste a certain way, every vintage, no matter what. And they just put a bunch of shit in it until it does what they wanted to do. Um, the thing for me about Santa Margarita in particular is it has a rotting melon aroma. <laughs> and I agree. Don't get behind the rotting melon. Like I just, it just, mm, it puts me off, right? So, but that's, again, if that is, if someone just really loves Pinot Grigio, there are any number of small producers, people who are out in their vines, busting their asses every day and making a beautiful product for a lot less money. And, you know, and 
they make 2,000 cases a year, if that, right? Like, yeah. so, so that's what, you know, what I would steer people toward because I'm from people who bust their asses every day, you know? So oh. that's where, well, I, that, that's where I want to pay my, that's where I want to spend my money. I yeah. want to see people who bust their asses every day. All right. I'm with you on that. Now, listen, I think we've done a great job here t uh, tackling this topic, but uh, here's what I would like each of us to do. So on that note of living inside the restaurant or living inside the song or living inside the, the film or uh, living inside the drink, what to each of you, and this is sort of what we'll wrap on, uh, what is it? What is the one place or the one meal or the one drink or the one film uh, that you lived inside of for so long that will always ring special to you whenever you either see it, eat it, drink it, uh, or hear it? I'll start with Tim because we've done this and you've had some practice in terms of music. So, oh, man, uh, I, I think. Man, on that spot. I, is I, it I a melon? Yeah, that's a rotting, <laughs> a rotting melon. I heard words. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see what oh, a wait, rotting melon Before you answer this question, Tim had a very good thing. He, he equated last night. I'll give you credit for it. Uh, he created, he uh, equated the coronavirus to being like waiting in an airport for your flight to get here. <laughs> right you're waiting it's delayed it's delayed it's delayed you have another drink it's delayed it was a, a good analogy anyway go ahead bud what, what you got? Yeah. What'd you... i would i would say if i had to say living in a film film uh, a food a drink whatever yeah i think first thing that comes to my mind and i know uh peter will appreciate the uh, back to the future i feel like that's one of the i think when people think about um you know, nostalgia or memories or whatnot. There's two things that really get things. It's, it's, it's the olfactory gland, which is, is the sense of smell mm. and uh, music. And I think that like for me, uh, I know this is kind of weird, but like the, the, the smell of a VHS in like a VCR and Love going it. In and putting it in and then hearing the music, like that like just takes me in. Like if I have like a VHS, Back to the Future, putting it in, hearing the theme, <laughs> I'm there. Like I'm and, and, the, and the movie itself is phenomenal. It's something yeah, that it's nostalgic. Like it like, always. It, I think it's a movie that always for for our group anyway. It, it's it's one that will always hit home it, whenever it's, it's on. For everyone, it, uh, some people say it literally is a perfect movie, even though it isn't perfect with its a lot of strange undertones. Yeah. But like it is a perfect movie, so that, that, I would say that. So you're going back to the future, Tony Manja. What you got? Uh, that, I, feel like that's a, I feel like your answer is going to be good, so don't fuck it up. No, that's 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 a tough one. I mean, you know, really, what you said uh, for me, restaurant had to be Belmont Tavern. That's just a place that 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 you know that I think of you go. We, we go there. Mm. When you you know, I mean, that's just something I think about. Uh, you know, so I mean, is is there a dish? I think about my my father's uh, sauce on Sunday. You know, that's so these, these, Yeah, I mean, those those are just little. Little things. I mean, you know, I can go on and on about a movie and about you know, but that's go ahead, go ahead. We got time. Go ahead. What's your movie? <laughs> no, no, no. no what's uh, movie, movie, movie. Rocky. Rocky had to be my favorite movie of all time. Uh, uh, the, the perfect underdog story. Uh, I mean, re really, I think I think I like it better than better than The Godfather. To be honest, I, I, uh, I just don't, I just don't love be insulting to Joe when he's in the room here. <laughs> he wasn't in. He wasn't in Godfather. <laughs> but he was in spirit. In spirit, he was in Godfather. <laughs> And then, and then for music, it had to be really anything Bruce Springsteen, because that that's uh, I'm, uh, you know like uh, growing up, uh, um, you know just yeah, Jersey boy. Oh, yeah. Bruce. Oh, Bruce. How about you, Joe? One of my favorite movies I love to watch is Coming to America with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> great, Eddie Murphy. fucking great choice. Every time Eddie Murphy's on, I love him. And uh, eating wise, I love a place down in Fort Lauderdale called Shooters. Very good place on the water. Really nice clam chowder. Now, give me a nice white clam chowder and like a nice bun mm. and then a nice cup of coffee afterwards with just a little milk in it. Oh, I'm, I'm in heaven. I love my coffee. Coffee's great. I love that. And, um, you know, I love to cook. I love cooking. Cooking is very, you know, therapeutic for me. You know, I like to cut up my carrots and cut up my stuff. And it's just really nice and awesome, man. And the great thing I also like to do is Watch your show. Yeah, I'm gonna watch Godsend tonight. So that I'm, I'm uh, uh, Graves Gravesend, Gravesend, Gravesend. <laughs> well, Joe is Godsend. Godsend. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay, Lance, what do you got on that one? Oh, um, you know, with everything that's going on with all this pandemic, you, you think about uh, old times, you think about memories and and good times. 
and you were just talking about beef and, and all that. And, and I probably think the things that come to mind for me are uh, Peter Luger Steakhouse as a kid going there with my grandfather once a yes. year. Um, just the smell of it, the, the, the everything, the ambiance, everything. And at the end of the meal, he would always ask for, all right, it's time for the dessert. You know, got to have the double, double chocolate chip uh, ice cream. And, um, you know, a song to that would be like a stairway to heaven. Right. Nice. And then as you were just talking about that before, it's like memories from um, we're talking about high school and going backwards. Like this is the stupidest movie that people will say. But to me, it means a lot. You remember Days of Thunder? Totally. You remember that movie? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I know Cole. He always goes to the outside, you know, but um, it's got a lot of memories of Chad. You know, um, I don't know if you know this, Pete, but some of that movie was taped on Chad Lauder's farm down in North Carolina. Didn't know that. No. So uh, high school. You didn't know that. Yeah. No. yeah. So, um, oh, Lance, you know, I, on the grill, here, man. Uh, I do want to ask you about something. In the movie, um, Catch Me If You Can. Uh, there's there's a character they, they referenced a guy named Lance Applebaum. All right, you don't do you know that do you know the story behind that? I, I don't know that, the story. But, but, All right, yeah. All right. You, was, have you ever have you guys ever seen Catch Me If You Can? Have you ever seen that that yeah. movie with Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio? Right. Yeah, they, they great, speaking about Lance Applebaum. Yeah, right. This is a great story. This is a great story. Okay, so this is my 15 minutes of fame that I ever had. Okay, <laughs> so long time ago. There was a small time director that was directing a movie called Jurassic Park 2. Okay. And the, the director, he was he was pretty famous at the time. You might have heard of him. His name was uh Steven Spielberg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and his office called my company, Fossil Farms, and asked for ostrich eggs for their movie. They needed like dinosaur looking eggs. So this was when my company, I, I was in the basement of my parents' house, right? I commandeered their basement. That was my office. And I get a call from Steven Spielberg's assistant. And I'm, I'm like, this is, this is great. So I said, I'm, I'm going to give you those ostrich eggs, you know? And, and she's like, well, how much are the ostrich eggs? I said, nothing. Take the eggs. That's great. Whatever you can do to, uh, to thank me like that, that would just be, that would be really cool. So I didn't hear anything about it. Didn't hear it for a while. And then this movie comes out and a friend of mine comes home and goes, you need to go to the movies and see this movie. Catch me if you can. And I'm going, why? He's like, I'm not going to tell you just, you need to go to the movie. So I go to the movie and I, I, I see the whole movie and I didn't even hear it. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, Lance, they called your name. It's crazy. Like, they said, they, they go, my, my buddy Leo goes to the front desk and says, you know, hi, I'm looking for my friend, Lance Applebaum. Can you help me find my <laughs> friend, real, Lance yeah. Applebaum? Now, here's the thing. I only have met two other Lances in my entire life. I've never met another Lance Applebaum. Okay? Yeah. So the backstory is, is that at the same time that they were shooting Jurassic Park 2, that they were also writing this movie called Catch Me If You Can. And I just happened to believe that the assistant oh, it totally. put the name into the script and that was like that was like a thank you you know so <laughs> yeah but i say like me and my boy leo <laughs> <laughs> you know? great so story time, i caught that movie in quarantine right. again and i'm like fuck man lance is in the he's in the, the fucking movie time, every <laughs> single time i take people to my brother's farm and i show them like the farm with the bison and the ostrich i'm like all right this is Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> and, now tell you about, and now I'm going to tell you about my quick 15 minutes of fame. I love it, and, man. And, you know, me and, and, and somebody's like, so do you like, do you talk to Leo? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. You have to say that. Yeah. Right now, you know. <laughs> All right, Angela, what about you? What, uh, what have you lived in food-wise, movie-wise, music-wise, drink-wise? I think drink-wise, you'll have a good answer for this. Well, uh, you know, um, so we talked about this last time, like red burgundy, you know, and, uh, a couple of years ago, I had the great fortune to go with the company I was working for to burgundy and, and had just legendary bottles with the legends who made them. And like, and it was at what, by the time the trip was over, like you couldn't have the experience that I had. The richest man in the world couldn't pay for that because those you had to be like, 
in the private homes of the people who made these wines. And these guys are like farmers, man. They got like dirt under their nails. They're again in their in the vines busting their asses all day. But by the time those bottles get here, they're like three hundred dollars on the shelf. You know, so it's you know pretty amazing. And like I had wines that were like from nineteen eighty eight and that you know simply don't exist. Like you can't buy them because they're only in that guy's basement. You know, cellar. Um, so that you know. For drinks, yeah, like things that you just can't even find. Um, movies, two movies always that I can watch forever and ever until the cows come home. Princess Bride. Love it. Uh, the Philadelphia Story, which is old, old, uh, you know, Cary Grant, Jimmy Stewart, Catherine Hepburn. Love that movie. Music. Um, so people don't really know this, but I used to sing back in the day. Um, and, you know, I could, I mean, I, use, I will never know about wine what I have forgotten about music. <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, it's been a long time. But, um, you know, every now and then, like, I mean, and, like stuff that I loved when I was 12 will just like get so good to me. Like, you know, like just loud Led Zeppelin, you know? Love that. Yeah. But, you know, like stuff like that where I'm just like, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, it just like really, really gets to me. Um, so and then food, man, uh, just pasta, all the pasta, all the time. Like I just, you know, the, the, the homemade stuff, I can't, I can't get enough of it. And, you know, when people suggest, you know, maybe cutting back on carbs, I'm like, ah! go fuck <laughs> Never, right, yeah. <laughs> I had a chiropractor tell me once that you, you have to cut back on pasta. I laughed at him and I stopped going to the chiropractor. Uh, Mike, what do you got, man? Stuff that you lived inside of. There you go. Uh, food? Um, food, wine, film, whatever. Food, wine, film. Food, my, I don't have, I mean, as a chef, I don't have that romantic story of pulling on the apron strings of like my parent, my mom or my nonna. Or, I, don't, I don't have that, you know. Um, it's, I had a very weird dynamic growing up, but my grandmother did make this one dish and it was string beans and neck bones. Mm. So it was pork neck bones that were in the gravy. Mm -hmm. and she took them out and she never shredded them. You got the bones and all. So you, there's that choking hazard, you know, where you're going to fucking die. <laughs> right. And uh, I just remember that as a kid, it just being one of my favorite things. And, uh, and I try to mimic it. And uh, you, you never get all the way there, you know? Right. But, but you still have that memory. Uh, film, my hands-down favorite movie ever is Clerks. Nice. Um, Pretty good choice. Just, I, I don't know why. It, was just, it came out in a time, I was, I was like 15 years old when it came out, 16 years old. And uh, it, it just resonated as, as a movie. So like, I, mm -hmm. I could watch it two, three times straight through in a row. It doesn't matter. I probably have the entire movie memorized. Like... Yeah line for line favorite movie and then wine my connection is with um, with caduceus you know i met i met i met maynard 10 years ago and we've done since we've done uh, five james beard dinners together we've done a food and wine festival in martha's vineyard we've done dinners at my restaurants um he's become a friend uh i go out every single year different time of the year i help make the wine so i've been through every process of the wine making I've been through every part of the winemaking process with him, uh, from planting to harvest to crush to, um, you know, fermentation to punching to racking to everything, bottling, you, you name it, I've been through it with him. So I, I, his wines are incredibly unique. Um, they're, uh, incre he's incredibly passionate. There's only been, from my knowledge, there's only been four people that have ever been allowed to touch his wines other than himself. Mm. I'm fortunate enough. I've, I've been fortunate enough to be one of those people. So like this one that I'm drinking right now is the Onesis 2012. My dirty little fingers have been inside this bottle. <laughs> inside this yeah, wine. The fingers are going to be okay. banned uh, in 2021. They're not allowed to take hands. I heard today somebody, I was talking to a friend of mine and she said, uh, handshakes are out moving yeah. forward. So it's all elbow bumps. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But uh, yeah, so like Caduceus and Mercury Vineyards, um, Definitely, I have. There's a place in my heart for that, and uh, he—he's the one ten years ago that really got me 
really interested in wine. He, he inspired me to go and get my, you know, WCT certifications and gone through the whole thing. And, 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 you know, I go out there and, and, and I learn from him. It's not, it's not just the wine itself. It's, it's, it's the, it's the science behind it. Yeah. It's the agriculture behind it. The, it's, it's, it's the incredible uh, diversity in the, in the, in the growing process, especially in Arizona, you got a place like Arizona, you know, um, you go to Southern Arizona by Wilcox, which is down by Mexico and it's very dry and, and, and hot and barren. And then you go up North into the Verde Valley and you know, their issues are frost, you know, so it's, it's at 5,000 feet. So it's really interesting to see the diversity in that. So, you know, the Caduceus wine, the Merkin wine, yeah. you know, that really, that's, that's where I'm, that's Thanks. where I feel. Home. Sandra, what you got on that? Okay, so I'll tackle food, uh, music, and um, uh, movies. So food, there's a little Not wine. Yeah, I mean, I can, but like... Uh, Do your well, thing. Do your thing. I didn't mean to jump in. Go ahead. So food, there's a small restaurant in Liguria, in Cavidi Lavagna. Super, super small restaurant. Um, I've been with my family several times, and it was the best linguine and clams ever I've ever had. They go out in the day, they catch all the fish, they come back, they bring just that experience. And I was just there last um, uh, July again with my family, but that that whole experience, drinking their wine, drinking the Pigato, the Vermentino from Liguria was is so small, but so fresh. Um, that's food. Uh, and not touristy at all. It's not like Cinque Terre or Portofino or Santa Margarita. It's Cali di Lavagna, really, really small. You can walk up and down the strip and you're done in like 10 minutes. So that's food. Um, music, I think I was, again, super, super young the first time I heard Puccini. My father growing up always had Puccini filling the speakers. So it was the first time I heard uh, O Suave Fanchula from La Bohème. It changed my life. And I knew after hearing that, that I was going to do something in um, in music. I just didn't know what at the time. Um, also you have music. to watch her play piano. It's incredible. I'm a little rusty, but. Um, no, I doubt it. First concert, Duran Duran, my first concert changed my life. And then PNC, guys, PNC, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Foo Fighters, that combination. I forgot what year it was. So good. And then movies, my two favorite movies, of course, they have to do with food. Hunter for Journey. Have you guys seen Hunter for Journey? I've not seen that, no. <gasps> oh uh, everybody else seen that? No. After you finish watching The Grave, The Grave, Grave. Yeah. Great set. What watch Hunter for Journey? It's just when she made when he makes the freak when he makes the eggs. Do you guys have you knew that movie? No, with Helen Mirren. It's no. just you blew uh, it all away here. Even Angela's like, what the fuck? No. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that, it's, it's such an amazing movie. Just Hunter for Journey. Check it out. And Chef. Have you guys seen oh, Chef? Oh yeah, Chef is phenomenal. Yeah. The music. And I love his. And I love his. I sort of love his his Chef show. You know, have you seen that? Yeah, I've been watching that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love the movie, like Chef, the music they have. I, I want to like jump in that, his little uh, truck. I just want to jump in there when he's making, and the sun is so cute. I have an 11 year old little guy. So like that movie kind of resonates. So that, that movie crushes me. I love it. So I'm going to pick for, uh, nobody asked, but I'm going to pick for food, a place in Boston uh, called The Daily Catch. I and I and I and I thought about picking something in Italy and I've had amazing meals in Italy when we went but when I went out to, to when we went to Boston and I lived in that restaurant you know I didn't know what I was in for and you know maybe it's just the cooking right in front of you and the pans and all that stuff it, 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 daily catch to me is where it's at have you have you been there yet Tony Manjo No that's the place I, I couldn't I, get into Oh fuck you going to want to wait on the line uh, and then, uh, you know, the Stones obviously are, are a huge influence in my, in my music repertoire. And I would say get your yayas out and listening to Mick Taylor uh, ripped on Love in Vain to me is where it's at. And as far as uh, movies, it's a Bronx tale for me, babe. <laughs> Good movie. So, uh, and catch me if you can, but those are the two of my, <laughs> but, uh, but to me, there's no more beautiful story than a Bronx tale. I mean, it's got a little bit of, it's got a nice amount of mafia, but a nice amount of heart. And I, I think I fell in love with, uh, Jane, 
you know, in that in the in that movie and whatnot. And so, to me, there's no better movie than 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 that. Hey, I think we wrapped this, guys. I think we did a pretty good job of. Uh, thank you, Tim. That is the Daily Catch. <laughs> <laughs> I think we wrapped, uh, you know, this entire food and wine film festival a little bit different. We didn't show. Joe, do you have a clip that you want to show? I'm sure they used to showing a clip. I'm showing tons in my background, but <laughs> <laughs> I've been checking it I out. Know it, Joe. I, 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 I just figured out how to show uh, clips in the background, so I've been playing them. Nice. But, I mean, I got a couple here if you want to see them. Uh, yeah. Well, ooh, what do we got here? <laughs> One of these. Oh, wannabes. Oh, you know that movie. Yeah, I do. Oh. Nice. Hmm. I love that movie. <laughs> well, this is great, time. guys. I hope we get to reunite all of us together for the reunion episode of this show. <laughs> 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 of this nice, show. Sandra, it's always wonderful to see you, and I'm going to definitely keep stalking your piano playing. Angela, I can't wait to do more with you. You know what I mean? Uh, this has been fantastic. Anytime. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I just, I'm so interested in all the things you're interested in. And uh, Lance, it's always great. Lance, I still want to do a whole Lance show. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like yeah. there's a Lance, Mike Carino, sort of the group to be made there. I'm, I'm, we, I'm, it's, it's in, it's over, it's here. You know what I mean? Uh, we could, we could do and Tim, Tim, yeah, I was going to say we look like a WWF tag team. Yeah. Uh, and Tim, wow, I mean, uh, you've, you you set the records for the most appearances on Live at Night, so that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, and I'm the token guy. Tim is hired with his backgrounds. I mean, <laughs> Tim, How he I, is I gotta not, ask you, uh, I gotta, on I'm going to message you, Tim, I'm gonna message you and I'm going to ask for some, some lessons on how you do that. <laughs> I think I give him inspiration because he's seen me doing it. <laughs> I, I give it all to Joe. <laughs> but also, props to Joe Joseph jo Nofrio here, man. I mean, listen, dude, you are such a talented actor and such a such a creative force. I mean, every one of us has seen something that you've been in. I would have picked Goodfellas if I didn't pick a Bronx Tale. So that's another thing that you were in. Uh, and you've done some incredible work, and I know. Listen, you did a you did a TV series for uh, what sixty? How many episodes that was that you did? Uh, right? Oh yeah, yeah, that was on two seasons. Yeah, so I, I mean, like, yeah, constantly working and just a super talent. And it was nice to have Paul share some things about you too, man. Just a great dude, and thank you for spending some time with us here. And I hope you'll come back and do some more. Yeah, Pete, anytime you have an action to do something, I'm always down. Nice, and we're gonna do that web studio. From the beginning that I met you in that little hallway when I got my uh costume my done. I always go back to that in my brain. Yeah. yeah. I always think always, about that. Yeah. It was always a pleasure seeing you and working with you. You're always so nice. Thank and anytime you. you need something, I'm always there for you, no matter what, man. Very and much appreciate it. Work and thank you for doing these things and keeping everybody busy. Trying to keep people thank in. you for everybody on the show. You've yeah. been great. You're awesome. And I got so much knowledge out of it. I hope everybody stays safe and you know, just Stay positive, man. Keep That's your it. Stay positive. Wash your it. hands. You don't want to get the corona. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and also, Chef Mike, listen, man, I love you, man. I can't wait to do more with you. We got a lot of cool stuff coming down, down, down the pathway. And Tony Manja, always good to see you. I love, uh, you. I'm, I love you too. I'm sure we'll see each other very soon uh, on another one of these. So, all right, guys, thanks so much for being here, and I'll uh, see you next time.